Sports Shooter. I'm host Ken Boyer here for another Quick Bricks update. Michigan Wolverines in their season, upcoming season. And uh, following a, a pretty disappointing um, eight win season last year, where you see saw them fall to, you know, the, you know, to just lose to teams they shouldn't lose to. Their problem last year was finishing games. And I feel like this is the biggest reason why this team will go undefeated in the regular season. The first line that they threw out that they could match up, they was pretty much equal to everybody. But I feel like now Michigan is back to being Michigan again. And now it's going to be where teams show up and they just, and they lose. You know, it used to be where teams just show up and see Michigan and they lose the game. You know, and I feel like it's going to, it's starting to, it's going to start turning back into that this year. You know, with teams like, you know, Northwestern, who front line, who, you know, it is almost, you know, it's, it can be competitive with any team in the, in the league, you know, but a team like Michigan or Ohio State, like, they should be able to win those games. It shouldn't be, you know, an issue. You know, now they have depth at positions. You know, the defensive line, they go they go two and three deep at each position. The linebacker position, uberly talented, you know, and, and veterans and guys with experience, even the young guys that they have are, you know, more talented than some of these other teams. Those teams that are, you know, one way or the other, they have those teams, they play them at home. You know, a team like Nebraska, you know, where two years ago they came into Michigan Stadium and was, you know, lost immediately from walking into the stadium, you know, and they were, they blew Nebraska away because of the home, the home field advantage. So I feel like now Michigan is going to win those games where it's, you know, those tossed up games. And now with the depth that they have, they can chase around Taylor Martinez. They can chase around, you know, Kane Coulter and, and Braxton Millers. So they have fresh legs and fresh bodies to rotate it. That'll allow them to finish games, you know, and, um, Losing Denard Robinson is hard. That's something we're all, you know, sad to see. You know, we hate to see him go. But now with Devin Gardner there, I think the first upgrade you're going to have is less turnovers. You know, I don't know how you replace 1,200 yards, you know, on the ground with Denard Robinson, but I know how you re you can replace nine interceptions and only nine touchdown passes. Like, that's, that's the biggest thing I see from that end. It's going to allow guys like Jeremy Gallon, who were only a couple hundred yards, you know, shy, from a thousand yards last year, you know that is a, that guy's been an outstanding receiver since I seen him in the Army. You know, uh, predict, when he participated in the Army All American game, just the way that he run routes, his hands and everything like that. That's a little guy that goes up and gets it. That guy's outstanding, and to see how he's improved the past five years now into the season senior season. To, that guy's going to have a real breakout year. People think last year was a breakout year for him. I think this year will be definitely a breakout year for him, especially with, you know, the freshman um, Amar um, Darbo going down. You know, um, I'm sorry, sophomore, because he, you know, burnt his red shirt last year. So sophomore Amar Darbo, wide receiver, who everybody was, you know, just praising and practicing and everything like that. He's going out, and J.U. Cheston to step in. But I don't even feel like it is an issue as far as, you know, wide receivers it's the fact that Devin Gardner is going to be able to get these guys the ball you know he has a strong arm he, he's a much better you know pocket passer he's the legitimate pro style quarterback you know he's went to camp NFL camps and stuff like that and everybody you know has praised him and say man this guy's going to be really good and I'll see him in two years and you know there's definitely somebody I'll give a look at so he adds that with the ability to run. I don't think they need to run for 12, 1,300 yards, you know, like Denard Robinson. You know, Fitz Toussaint looks outstanding. I mean, he looks he looks back and, and ready. I mean, the cuts he's making, the speed, the burst, and his power, he's gotten bigger and stronger, too. And with the competition that they now have with Thomas Rawls and Justice Hayes and then the freshmen, De, um, Derek Green and um, Davion Smith, it really has, has <laughs> caused him to really rise up to come from that injury. You know, he broke his leg literally and can come back a year later and, and look the way that he did. I mean, he, Michigan looks to be in good hands. And um, the offensive line are, are, are returning the best tackle combination in, in the country probably, definitely in the, in the conference. And um, Michael Schofield and Taylor Lewan, so they look dominant. 
people say, okay, give Devin Gardner another year that this isn't the year where people should be talking, making a run at a national championship or undefeated season, but I think this is the year. You're not going to have these two guys. Those two guys are going to be replaced next year. And you're going to be breaking in to Ben Brayton, who was supposed to start at, at guard before they switched him in favor of Graham Glasgow to get him ready for next year and get him some snaps, which you'll get plenty of this upcoming weekend against the Chippewas. But I think this is the year for Devin Gardner where he has a solid offensive line and two um, superstars on the, on the tackle, at the tackle position. So this is his year, and he has the wide receivers and Jeremy Gallo and these guys. So this is going to allow those wide receivers to develop. People say Michigan hasn't recruited you know, elite wide receivers and no guys that has risen to the, you know, the forefront. But you see teams like Texas A&M and Oklahoma State, I mean, all these different teams, TCU, they have all of these guys you know, that, that come in that are three stars, not even high three stars, four stars, definitely not five stars that, that make, that, that are able to develop and grow. You know, you can give someone a, a product, a, a raw package, but it's up to you to take it out and package, season it and cook it and grill it and have it, you know, um, ready and then cook to perfection. And I think that's what it's going to allow these wide receivers to do with having a pro style quarterback who has no choice but to get them the ball. And I think it's going to open up things for the run game. You know, they're going to be they're a lot more, they're going to be a lot more downhill running this year. And I think just all around the offense going to, is going to be look totally different, be totally better, which is going to help that defense where they're not coming right back on the field you know, after three and out or you know demoralized because they're not able to move the ball or pound it. You know, it's just about that mentality. Everything is going to be able to be a lot more aggressive and and and, and Michigan like. Switching over to the to the defensive side of the ball, you know, you're going to have Cam Gordon replacing Jake Ryan, which every time I've seen Cam Gordon in practice or in games, he, 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 looks, he looks great. Like, it's certain little things that I think he didn't have before it, intangibles, you know, aside from the fact that Jake Ryan just straight up played like a monster. You know, a guy just played up and turns to a superstar, a, a, a force, the best defensive player on the team last year. So... You really can't knock Cam Gordon for that. You see who was who was ahead of him, but I think he's really added those intangibles now, where you can see that they named him team captain. You know, one of the team captains. So that's a, a, a I don't see, see like you would you know scale back at, at all as far as like what you can throw at defenses and how you blitz. He may be, he's a little faster than Jake Ryan too. So they'll definitely have all of those same components. And the thing is, once again, the aforementioned depth. They're going to be rolling these linebackers in and out with James Ross, Royce Jenkins, and um, um, Joe Bowden. They have guys now, you know, so they're, they're going to come at you. Same thing with the defensive line. You can go, you know, with Frank Clark. You can go with Taco Charlton, you know, Mario Ojemudia. They are loaded. You know, Andre Pipkins. You know, they have some guys there that are really going to, you know, take ownership and take hold of the line of scrimmage. The, the biggest thing I noticed in the in the Alabama game, which a lot of people, you know, <laughs> I mean, they seen it as it progressed and as they started to completely dominate that game. But from the first drive, even when the Alabama, you know, went three and out, I seen just a push on the line of scrimmage when they said height. I mean, the offense, the, the line literally would just change. They took them two, three yards forward. You know, even though they were able to swamp and come through because Greg Madison preaches that to, you know, just corral to the ball and hustle to the ball. But, I mean, that that punch that Brady Hokey and Greg Madison is always talking about, that punch, I think that is the biggest thing I've seen them improve, and they're not going to just get knocked off the line of scrimmage. And that is a, that's a game that I think showed Michigan really how they have to play football, how they have to get off of the line of scrimmage. You can see them throughout the rest of the uh, season. They were so much better. Even in, in the Ohio State game, even though they lost that game, that was a game that was a Michigan-Ohio State game. You say, okay, these are two equal teams that are, are fit to be on the same field with each other. During the Rich Rodriguez era, there's no way you can say that. You just looked at it and say, oh, when is this going to be over? You, you knew after the first two minutes, you say, oh, yeah, we, we lose again. You know, it's nothing you can do. You know, so it's, it's a totally different thing now. You know, last year, now you're seeing this year, these two teams come back and they reload and recruit. And, and, and Michigan, you know, has recruited the, the top two offensive line halls the past two years. 
you know, recruiting out of anybody in the entire country. So that's something that they, they don't lack at all. You know, Graham Glasgow taking over for Ben Braden. It's no knock on Ben Braden. You know, they're trying to groom him for the tackle position for when Taylor LeWine leaves. But, you know, these guys, they have no deficiency, no worries as far as talent. You know, you have Thomas Gore in it and, and the secondary and Jerry Wilson and Demonte Thomas. You know, Blake Collins is back at corner. and Ray. Mar they have speed. You know, they have speed. That's the most exciting thing that, you know, you're going to see this year from this Michigan defense is the speed, you know, and compound that with them, you know, just rushing to the ball and really, really, really hustling to the, to the football. You're going to really see a totally different defense and you're going to see this defense start to take, take shape and turn into that Michigan defense. In my predictions for this year, I, like I said, 12-0, and 0, I feel like they're going to go undefeated in the regular season. I feel like the Big Ten championship game, those two teams are going to go back and they're going to, you know, <laughs> go through the game plan and how everything went down and Urban Myers, that's They're going to have a chance to go whichever team wins that game in the Big Ten championship is going to play for the national championship. And you're going to have a similar situation like you had in 2006. But the only difference is now with the Big Ten championship, you're going to have, and they're playing that week after with the rest of the teams in the SEC, is you're going to have, you know, you're not going to have a, a team like Florida, like in 06, that can just leap for all Michigan because they didn't play that week, or Ohio State because they didn't play that week. So you're going to have these teams ready. They're going to be ready to play in that national championship game. I mean, the Big Ten is really going to get their respect back this year, and I feel like I'll favor any Big Ten team going into that national championship game. You know, I, 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 predict, Mich I predict Alabama and Ohio State playing for the national championship game because I just feel like whoever, you know, wins that game in November against Michigan and Ohio State, that team just going to have so much more to just contemplate and just harp on into the next time they meet and they're going to come out ready to play. You know, I think they're going to come out ready to play. You can't, you can't afford any complacency, which I don't think it'll be – so much of that is going to be the other team just so mad if they lost. And I feel like Ohio State will lose that game in the regular season that they're going to come out like game busters and, and they're going to have that slight edge. And that's all you have in games like that, that little edge that's going to take them ultimately, you know, into the national championship game. But the big thing is the Michigan Wolverines will return to the Rose Bowl this year. So that is the that is the goal for a reason. That is something that they're going to be able to capture with another BCS game in second in three years for Brady Hope, and they'll be able to capture that Rose Bowl. For teams like Northwestern, who maybe their their first line can you know hang in there with them, it's not going to be the same. They have the depth. They're going to roll over teams like that. Michigan State. I don't know what they're doing at quarterback. They don't have Le'Veon Bell that to tote the ball 30, 40 times, and they still only mustered up field goals last year in that game. You know, so I don't see any way that that's going to happen. And they were at home then too. Breakout player, uh, freshman. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay on the defensive side. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Taco Charlton. I mean, a guy six six, two eighty five. I mean, absolute beast in practice, and you know, just a a force a guy like that that has that speed and that size and rotating on this defensive line i think teams would be lines would be wore out by the time he comes in he rotates in there on that 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 fourth or fifth play into the to the series that you know him coming full force and full steam ahead along with Ojemi moody they're going to be able to make some plays my key player my my breakout player though that this year though with a lot of people who is really downplaying i think is dennis northley if they use him the way that they should use him, him switching over from running back to slot receiver. You know, that guy can be a real big play playmaker, you know, similar to how Mario Manningham was when they had him with jet sweeps and things like that, you know, running and streaking down down the field in the slot, just moving him around and letting him do a whole lot of things. I think they have a, a really strong element to their offense that, that they'll be remiss to, um, if they didn't use it to their uh, full potential. And he's also going to be returning punts again this year on top of kickoffs. You know, with them moving the, the, the kickoff, you know, back and everything like that. You know, they're basically trying to just take that away from the game in college and the pros. But it's going to be a big upgrade from, you know, Jeremy Gallon, who was basically just their, you know, fair catch man. He was just their fair man last year. I don't know why they didn't really utilize that. But I think Dennis Norfleet, they're really starting to see the potential of this guy. And they're going to let him do that. I feel like he's going to be a, a real big time playmaker for this team and a real, you know, X factor in, in games where, where it's really close, especially in games like 
uh, against Ohio State or against Nebraska where you have a um, guy like Amir Abdullah or, you know, um, Dante Wilson, like you have uh, the freshman there in Ohio State who they're going to use him in sort of that Percy Harvin type package. So those games, you're going to need all your weapons, and I think he's going to be able to step up. And they'll, they'll be smart if they get him some touches early in games like Central and, and Notre Dame and, and um, get him really into the group because you're going to leave Hey, how do we follow up? I open an act. Hey, we